Pokemon cards. Whether it's old or new, rare or just plain weird, you probably have some interest in Pokemon cards if you clicked on this video. Today, I'm going to talk about some of the best places in Osaka where you can buy Pokemon cards. I'm going to focus on the Namba and the Nipponbashi areas of Osaka, and for those of you that are familiar, Nipponbashi is essentially Osaka's version of Akihabara. So if you're looking for anything Pokemon, video game, or anime related, then I definitely recommend checking out Nipponbashi on your trip to Osaka. So you're probably thinking, if I want to buy Pokemon cards, why don't I just go to the Pokemon Center? And of course, you can go to the Pokemon Center. The Pokemon Center sells Pokemon cards. But unless you want to wait in line like 30 minutes to maybe buy like five packs of Pokemon cards, that probably already sold out, then I recommend we check out some other stores too. <laughs> The main places you'll find Pokemon cards are convenience stores like 7-Eleven or Family Mart, toy shops, and card stores. And it's these card stores that we're going to focus on today. Whereas convenient toy stores only sell new products, card shops have a large variety of secondhand goods for sale as well. Some of the stores we'll check out today include Bokoff, Mandarake, Pureizu, and many more. Most of these stores focus on selling cards from newer sets, but some stores such as Mandarake have quite a large variety of cards from the 90s and 2000s as well. Mandarake. The first store on the list is Mandarake. Some of you may be familiar with Mandarake from Max Mofo's videos on YouTube. Mandarake! Mystery cubes, they're all different... There are multiple Mandarake in most major cities in Japan. And we have two here in Osaka. Mandarake Grand Chaos in Nipponbashi and Mandarake Umeda store in Umeda. Today, I'll be checking out Mandarake Grand Chaos. The trading cards are located on the 6th floor, next to the fan fiction and adult video games. There are two sections of Pokemon cards in the store, the showcase with rare and expensive cards, and binders towards the back of the store. For me, Mandarake is one of the best places to buy older cards, as you can often find some cheap rares in the binders at the back of the store. As well as that, they generally have a larger and more organized variety of older cards than most of the other stores in Nipponbashi. However, the common cards are generally a lot more expensive than most of the stores. They also recently had some cubes of old Pokemon cards, but for a higher price and containing cards of less value than those seen in Maximofo's videos from a few years ago. I'd also say that the cubes are way less common since the COVID Pokemon card boom. Mandarake has a limited selection of newer Pokemon cards, but it does have some for sale. Overall, I'd give Mandarake a rating of a B or B+, with the pros being more old cards than most stores, some of the cheapest old rares I've found, well-organized card sections, and the negatives being the store is very cramped, they have a small amount of cards overall, most of the common cards are overpriced. The next star on the list is Pureizu, which I thought romanized as plays or pre -Z, but apparently it romanizes as pre-wise, whatever the fuck that means. Pureizu has three stores in Nipponbashi, but they all pretty much sell the same thing. Pureizu mainly focuses on the newer sets, but it has a large variety of cards. Pureizu has a huge collection of common cards, but they're completely unsorted. However, they do sell them for the average price of 33 yen per card, and they bother to take the time to separate out the old cards from the new. Amongst the common cards, they do have rarer cards mixed in. These cards are sleeved and have a price written on them, but these prices are still generally the cheapest you'll find anywhere in Osaka. They also sell cubes of Pokemon cards, with the rarest cards generally being two cards that you'll see on the faces of the package. However, the package does include a large collection of single rares and common cards for the price of 300 yen, so these are great purchases if you're looking just to build your collection of Japanese Pokemon cards. They also sometimes sell 700 yen cubes, which generally include one secret rare, but these are from the cheaper sets, and the secret rare is generally not a very good card. Overall, I'd give Purezu a rating of A- for cheap cubes. Cheap commons and old commons. Discounted, damaged cards. Some old rares and also having Pokemon card paraphernalia for sale. And the only downsides being, the store is not particularly organized, but with so many cards, there's only so much they can do. And some of the cards that you'll see in the showcase, in my opinion, are pretty overpriced. 
The next store we'll take a look at is Trading Card Park by Furu Honichiba. Furu Honichiba can be found throughout Osaka and maybe some of the other parts of the Kansai region, and I think they also have one store in Nagoya. Furu Honichiba isn't too dissimilar from Prezu, and it's the final store in Nipponbashi that sells cubes of Pokemon cards, at least as far as I'm aware. They sell cubes for 500 yen, but the difference being Furu Honichiba's cubes generally contain a few more cards, and sometimes you can get packs with one or two art rares. So if you like art rares or just simply want to get more cards, then the cubes are definitely worth purchasing. The only thing I'd say is, Prezu generally have more single rare cards and more cool cards inside their cubes, but for 500 yen, I wouldn't say Furu Honichiba's cubes are bad at all. Furu Honichiba doesn't really sell many old cards, but they do have a few in the showcase. They also have way less cards in general than Prezu, but that's mainly being common cards, so it doesn't really matter. Furu Honichiba also has a kind of lucky dip thing, where you can just buy a single card for a thousand yen, but you don't know what it is. And I can't speak on them, but like the vending machines, which I'll talk about later in this video, I'd hesitate before I pay 1,000 yen for a card I don't even know what it is. Furu Honichiba also has a showcase that contains damaged cards. But from my experience purchasing from this showcase, I'd say the damage is pretty minimal. And sometimes the cards are up to 50% off, so it's definitely worth checking out. Overall, I'd give Furu Honichiba a rating of B- or C+. Their cubes and general volume of cards are a little bit worse than Purezu, and they don't really sell any old cards, but I'd still generally say it's worth the visit. The next style I'd like to talk about is Treasures or Treasures in English. They have a couple showcases of older cards, and a couple of boxes containing a few older commons and energy cards. There's also one or two showcases containing newer rares, and a few shelves of individually packaged single rares and common cards. Though these cards in particular I think are somewhat overpriced. And they also have a couple of cases containing old and new Pokemon paraphernalia. Overall, the store is a little cramped, and I think most items are overpriced. C+. Just like the Beatles, Yellow Submarine isn't really that great. They have a few boxes of older common cards, which are organized by tape, which is very helpful, and they do sell them at average price of 30 yen per card. But their rares and old rares are ridiculously overpriced, and I wouldn't recommend purchasing any of them. Yellow Submarine also sells cubes of Pokemon cards for 200 yen each. These cubes only contain single rares and common cards, but for 200 yen, it's a pretty good deal. Overall, I'd give the store a rating of a D. Next, I'd like to talk about three stores at the same time. Card Lab, Card Box, and Dragon Star. All three of these stores are generally the same kind of thing, that's why I want to talk about them at the same time. They sell no individual common cards or cubes of cards, and all of their cards are in showcases. All three of them also have a limited selection of retro cards, and these retro cards are generally overpriced. Overall, these stores aren't particularly different from one another, but since they're close by, I recommend checking them out in case they have one or two rares that you're still missing. Overall, C-. Oh my god! The last store in the Pumbashi I'd like to talk about is Surugaya. Surugaya is a great place to find rare and old video games, but it's ridiculously overpriced, and that also applies to the cards too. On the second floor, they have a couple boxes of common cards, which they sell at 50 yen each, which I guess doesn't matter too much, but is overpriced. Then there's also three showcases which are organized by type, and not by year or series or anything like that. So I guess it's helpful if you're looking for a particular type of card. Generally, their stocks are limited and the price is a little high. They do have some paraphernalia and other things. Overall, I think I'd give it a D or D minus rating. Another store to talk about is Big Magic. Big Magic is pretty much the same as the last three stores, but I just wanted to give it its own category because they also sold English and Indonesian booster packs, which I thought was pretty cool. The final store I'll talk about is Bokov, which is actually located in Namba, very close to Namba Station. There are hundreds of Bokovs throughout the country, as well as its counterparts Hard Off and Off House. The Bokov in Namba is a Bokov Plus, which basically means not only does it sell video games, DVDs, and books, 
It also sells toys and clothes as well. Book of Plus is only around a 5-10 minute walk from Nipponbashi, that's why I'm including it in this video. Book of has the largest variety of cards organized by year. And they even have incredibly rare, incredibly hard to find old cards, but for ridiculously high prices, such as Shining Kabutops or Shining Magikarp. For the old cards, they organize the cards thoroughly by Pokedex order, so it's very easy to locate the card you're looking for. But again, the prices are particularly high. All the rare cards are individually sleeved, which is common across Japan. And the damaged cards are marked with different color stickers, which shows different levels of damage that the cards have received. Honestly, Book of Plus is probably one of the better stores in Osaka to buy Pokemon cards from, due to the large variety of cards overall, and its convenience from Namba Station. With the downside being that some of the cards can get pretty expensive, but since they have so many cards, it's more likely they're going to have the card you're looking for. They also have their older cards sorted into a separate box, which they sell for 55 yen per card, which isn't crazily overpriced, but I guess if you buy like 20, 30 cards, then you're going to end up spending 400, 500, 600 yen more overall. But you know, that's not really that crazy. Overall, I'd probably say Book Off is one of the best stores in the Namba area. So I give it a rating of A-. However, this doesn't apply to all Book Offs and Book Off Pluses around the country, and I can't speak for every Book Off, I've not been to them all, but some Book Offs barely have any cards, or they only have a few cards from like the newer sets. So if you're in Sendai or, I don't know, Fukuoka, then please consider maybe this Book Off isn't as good as some of the other Book Offs around the country. Finally, I'd like to talk about the scam that is Pokemon card vending machines. As you may be familiar with, Japan has a lot of vending machines. From drinks vending machines, ice cream vending machines, or even used pants vending machines. These machines sell blind boxes of Pokemon cards starting at around 500 yen. With the guarantee that you'll get at least one rare or double rare or secret rare card included. Personally, I've purchased three or four of these in my life. Uh, always of the 500 yen variety because I'm not really willing to put any more money into a vending machine when I don't even know what I'm going to get. And every single time I've been left thoroughly disappointed by what I got in return. Mostly you'll get an underwhelming double rare card that's probably valued at about 20 yen and it definitely wasn't worth the 500 yen that you put into the machine in the first place. Of course I can't claim this is a scam thoroughly and say like you will never ever win like a 100,000 yen card, but I've never seen anyone win anything worthwhile when they've put money into these vending machines. And unless you have money to waste, then I recommend you just go and buy the cards you want from a store. In my opinion, overall, complete scam, don't buy. F tier. Overall, I guess the stores I'd recommend in Namba and Nipponbashi are Purezu, and especially their Nipponbashi store, Mandrake, and book off. And if you're still looking for some cards after that, then I'd recommend checking out some of the other stores. Then, if you're specifically in the market for like retro cards, probably my recommendation would be first to go to Mandrake, then check out Purezu, and finally go to book off. Because book off is more likely to have the cards you're looking for, but more likely to be more expensive. So if you check out Mandrake and Purezu first, maybe you can pick out some of the cards you want, and then go to book off and collect the rest. Overall, I think this advice can be taken for Mandrake and Bokoffs around the country that, you know, some Mandrake and some Bokoff are going to have, like, good collections of cards, like the Bokoff in number, but some Bokoffs that I've been to have, like, barely any cards, so, you know, it can be hit or miss. And Mandrake is normally the best store to go to to buy retro cards. Uh, I've been to Mandrake in uh, Nagoya, and I've been to Mandrake in Nakano and... Akihabara in Tokyo, and these stores all had a large variety of retro cards, so Mandrake is definitely a place to go to check out retro cards. Uh, so I hope that you found this video interesting and maybe beneficial, and I hope that you'll be able to find good Pokemon cards when you come to Osaka. Uh, please consider subscribing, and please check out my music on Spotify and SoundCloud and my other YouTube channel, as that's like kind of my main thing. I just thought, you know, fuck it. I collect Pokemon cards, maybe I should talk about it.